In 1984, the police approached a trash collector about some of the garbage set out by a homeowner on his route. This was on a quiet suburban street in Southern California. In Laguna Beach, California, the local trash man became an arm of the law. Police had a tip Billy Greenwood was dealing drugs, not enough evidence to get a warrant to search his home. So they got the garbage man to turn over Greenwood's trash. And there they found receipts for drug sales and drug paraphernalia. Police used those discarded receipts to get a search warrant for the house. And in their search, they found enough evidence to indict Greenwood and his girlfriend on drug dealing charges. Not so fast, said Greenwood. He challenged the indictment, saying the garbage search violated his right to privacy. The California Supreme Court agreed. The case made it all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court in 1988. The court has now decided that once your garbage is as far as the curb, if the police want it, they don't need a warrant to look through it. Writing for the majority, Justice Byron White ruled that police don't need a warrant to look through your trash, at least if it's on the curb. For decades, the court had interpreted the Fourth Amendment as protecting a citizen's reasonable expectation of privacy. Stanford University legal scholar David Sklansky talked to Brian Ballow in 2015, and Sklansky says this expectation was at the heart of the debate in California v. Greenwood. Justice White said, you know, if you put your garbage out on the curb, it's liable to be pawed through by animals, scavengers, children, snoops. Uh, so <laughs> right. you can't, it's, it's not reasonable to say that you can expect privacy in something like that. That was that's, the first what, that's what garbage is, something you're getting rid of. Yeah. One thing the court didn't say, the court didn't say, this isn't your, you, you've thrown it away, so you obviously don't care about it anymore. That's what a lot of uh, lower courts had said in disagreeing with the California uh, Supreme Court's approach to this matter. A lot of lower federal courts and, and some state courts had said that searches of garbage aren't regulated by the Fourth Amendment because when you discard something, it's not yours anymore. It's yeah. not your property anymore. Yeah. And that was a decent argument up until the 1960s. The problem is that in the 1960s, the Supreme Court had said, we don't think that the Fourth Amendment only protects you against invasions of your property. And they said that because they wanted to extend the Fourth Amendment to protect against electronic surveillance, which often didn't involve any kind of physical trespass. So by the time the Supreme Court decided the Greenwood case in 1988, they had kind of boxed themselves in. They couldn't say, this is not a search because you've thrown it away. It's not your property anymore. And they didn't say that. Instead, they said, it's not a search because it's not reasonable to expect privacy in something that scavengers and animals and children and snoops might paw through. That was one argument. The second argument was, you can't really have a reasonable expectation of privacy in something that you've voluntarily given to a third party. The third party here was the garbage collector. And the court's theory was, since Greenwood and Van Houten had voluntarily conveyed this stuff to the garbage collector, they couldn't really say that they had a reasonable expectation of privacy anymore because when you give something to somebody else, you don't know what they're going to do with it. Who knows what those garbage collectors, I'm sure they're just prying through people's trash all day. That was the theory. Okay, so that's the decision. What did the dissent say? So the dissent was written by Justice Brennan, joined by Justice Marshall, and they essentially were incredulous. They said, we can't believe that the court really thinks that it's not an invasion of privacy to paw through somebody's garbage to find out what they're doing inside their house. And in fact, uh, Justice Brennan relied in part on the same incident involving former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger that the majority relied on. One of the things that uh, Justice White said in his majority opinion when he was explaining why you couldn't have a reasonable expectation of privacy in trash was a famous incident in 1975 when the National Enquirer sent a reporter to take away some of the garbage that then-Secretary of State Henry Kissinger had left outside of his residence and found a lot of embarrassing stuff. And Justice Brennan said, yeah, but (laughs) everybody thinks that this is outrageous. And the fact that it might happen to you shouldn't mean that it's okay for the police to do it to you. Okay. So, David, when we go back to the actual items that really helped to convict Greenwood in the case of these cocaine dealers back in the 1980s, 
Those items are things like plastic straws and plastic baggies that were tinged with cocaine. Uh, That's what the police officer found who was investigating. I don't think we'd find that kind of trash (laughs) in 19th century garbage. Uh, You know, if I were going through Abraham Lincoln's trash, I just wouldn't expect to find any of those throwaway items. Has the nature of trash changed a lot? Yeah, I think that's right. You know, it's odd because the history of trash searches as an investigative tool is kind of all bound up with advances in technology, partly because trash itself is bound up with advances in technology. I mean, we didn't have disposable straws and disposable razor blades Precisely. in the 19th century. We didn't have weekly curbside trash collection Mm -hmm. in the 19th century because people didn't generate enough trash. So, I mean, part of what makes trash searches a valuable investigative tool is that we all today regularly discard so much. We're kind of constantly shedding uh, evidence of what we've been up to that wasn't as much the case um, in the 19th century. So, um, I don't want you to think I'm not paying attention or multitasking, but I have to confess I'm looking at this trash can icon on my computer, uh, wondering whether I should delete this set of emails that's up on the screen. When I hit the delete button and trash them, do those emails remain my property? Are they subject to search? Where do they go? Well, where they go is a really interesting question. Whether the police can get to them is another interesting and more practical question. And the short answer to the second question is, yeah, the police can get to them in a variety of ways. And we've been trying for the last couple decades to figure out how to think about police searches of somebody's computer. We know, for example, that when you put something in the trash can of your computer, it doesn't necessarily wipe out all electronic traces of that file on your computer. We know that sophisticated techniques can be used to recover the file. So how does the Fourth Amendment think about that stuff? The court's been wrestling with that question for decades now, but one of the the court's theories was that anything that you do that other people can potentially see or look at Uh, is not something you can claim a reasonable expectation of privacy in. But the advances in electronic surveillance technology, including drones, including GPS tracking, have made the court more and more uncomfortable uh, with that idea, the idea that just because it's out in public, you can't claim uh, a privacy interest in it. Also, at least one member of the court, Justice Sotomayor, has said on the record that she thinks it's time for the court to re-examine the idea that you lose Fourth Amendment protection in anything that you voluntarily give to a third party, which was uh, the other basis for the Supreme Court's decision in Greenwood. Right. giving that garbage to the trash yeah. man was giving it to a third party. So the problem is that today— We all are constantly shedding not just physical detritus in the form of trash that we put out on the curb every week, but all kinds of electronic detritus. 